Now, there are, you can, from the protein data bank, um, save files. In the upper right hand corner in the summary was display files or download files. So you can save your PDB files. If you have a PDB file that's saved locally, you can use the menu and do file open. Now if you want to retrieve over the internet, the Windows versions have a plugin which you can use the PDB loader service to load to BCJ. Both the Mac, Pymol, and the Windows, you can do a fetch. And that's actually what we're going to do today, is we're going to fetch to BCJ. So I want everybody to type this command here, fetch to BCJ. And it doesn't matter whether you type it in the top or the bottom. But you should see a structure pull up that way. Uh, and if anyone's having problems, just raise your hand and one of us will come help you. Now, you can, using your mouse and the left button, you can just click and hold and then rotate. And so you get a sense of what your structure looks like, which is uh, somewhat like Gumby sort of thing. So just left hold and rotate. Uh, now this is a structure if we actually took the time to look at the summary record uh, at rcsb.org. Now remember, I'm telling you, you always need to do this. You always need to go and find the asymmetric unit and the biological unit, et cetera. I've already done that, so we're going to save that time uh, here in this class. But this is a structure. Uh, in this case, it's a heterotetramer, so it's got one chain is G alpha Q, one chain is G beta 1, one chain is G gamma 2, and your fourth chain is GERP 2. Uh, and so it's a heterotetramer. Uh, now, we're just going to play around a few minutes with the mouse. I want you to use the left, the middle, the right button and get to know um, uh, and then the, you can do the wheel, and then a single left click and a double click will identify your residues. So let's go here for a minute. The left button rotates, the right button, now the right button you want to move up and down. If you do side to side it doesn't do much, but moving up and down is the equivalent of a zoom. That's the move Z, the right button. Now the middle button, if you hold the middle wheel and hold it, uh, that's just to translate. Everyone see that? And then if you rotate uh, your wheel, um, that's a slab. And so you're cutting slices. You have a plane between you and the molecule and then behind the molecule and you're slabbing that in. And so you're only seeing what's between the two windows, the two slabs. And then you can slab it out and slab it in. Uh, now, if you completely lose your molecule and you can't find anything, just hit reset. That's the most important button to know about, reset. Okay. And it brings your molecule back. Anyone having problems with the mouse? Now, if you're actually, you can zoom in. Uh, and then let's zoom in quite a bit. Uh, I can click on a residue in the uh, tickle window at the top. It's telling you that's object to BCJ uh, slash, uh, and then there's two slashes, and then a chain name A slash residue glue, the residue name and the residue number 167, slash and the atom name OE2. So that's an oxygen in the epsilon position, and there's two atoms in the epsilon position, one and two. This is epsilon two position. And so that's the atom I clicked on, that's the residue name there. Uh, now one thing uh, I did not point out is here up at the top, if we were to reinitialize, all you would have is an object all, and you have A, S, H, L, and C. 
The A is actions, S for show, H for hide, L for label, and C for color. When we fetch to BCJ, we had another line come in. That's an object line uh, to BCJ. If we're to fetch another file now, that's going to pop up with its own object line. Each object has its own buttons, ASHLC, action, show, hide, label, and color. Now, the buttons you're going to use the most, you're not going to use label very often probably, but you're going to need to know A, S, H, and C pretty well. You're going to get to know those pretty well, even by the end of today. But those are your object buttons. Or in this case, we have a selection because I clicked on this residue and it's highlighted in pink. So we have a generic selection that popped up with its own buttons, A, S, H, L, C. So if you click on something, now if I click on something else, it's going into that selection also. And that's a glue 551, et cetera. Uh, I already have talked about the amino acid side chains, the beta, gamma, delta, epsilon, beta position. Now we're going to play around with show and hide and color by chain. So let's come back to PyMol. And uh, I'm going to zoom back out. I'll hit reset. Uh, now for this selection, generic selection under actions, I'm going to delete it so that I'm back to just uh, the starting confirmation uh, to BCJ. Now one thing I'm going to do, I'm going to come over here to S. We're showing lines right now. And actually if I zoom in, uh, you'll notice that those lines are colored differently. So the carbons are colored green. Your first structure in, by default, the carbons are colored green. The oxygens are colored red, and the nitrogens are colored blue. And uh, sulfurs are colored yellow. So you have sulfurs in a methionine and a cysteine. Here is um, this is a cysteine. You can see the sulfur, the yellow at the end. Everybody see that? Uh, so those are the different colors. So that default coloring scheme is color by atom type. Oxygen's red, nitrogen's blue, and then the color of your carbon varies. Uh, we're going to come over here to S. We're going to show right now we're showing lines. We can show sticks. That comes up a little thicker. And we can show ribbon, which you really can't see here. I'll show you that in a minute. But you can show cartoon. Now you'll notice that we just keep adding more things to the image. Nothing really goes away. We're not replacing anything. We're just adding more things. And we're doing it for the entire structure. So if we want to hide something, we can go to H, and we can hide the lines, and we can hide the sticks. And we're going to hide the ribbon for a minute. And you'll see the cartoon there. So that's a pretty weird looking molecule uh, that you see there. Everybody get to this type of display? Anyone having problems? Um, now what we're going to do, uh, and you don't have to do this. I'll go ahead and do this. I'm going to hide the cartoon, and I'm going to show the ribbon. The ribbon is kind of like a cartoon, except it's going just from C alpha atom to C alpha atom. But it doesn't have the, the visual information that's contained in the cartoon. So now I'm going to hide the ribbon. Most often you're going to see a cartoon. Most figures have a cartoon-like display in them. And that's what you'll see here. Looking at this, though, we know we have four molecules, but we can't tell where the beginning and ending of the four different polymer chains are. So if we're going to identify this, we're going to come over here to the C for color, and I'm going to click on that. Now, I can color by element. This, if I just rest over that, you'll see all the different options. The first option is carbon's black. 
Hydrogen's white, nitrogen's blue, oxygen's red, sulfur is yellow, etc. And then the only difference between these different options is the color of the carbon changes. So we can color our carbons green or cyan or magenta, yellow, uh, that sort of a peach color, white, blue, orange, etc. And so those are by default, as you read different structures in, your carbons change color, but you stay with coloring by element type. Yes, Landon? Uh, yes, it is. You can do that by typing a command. Uh, and so there's a set color command, and you have to give your, uh, you set color to a particular color, and then you give a criteria for element C for carbon. Yeah. Uh, now, what we want is not a coloring by element, but a coloring by chain. Now, again, we see several different options here. So if we select by chain, we're going to color uh, the four different molecules a different color because we have a heterotetramer. So each chain is going to have a different color. Now, the E.C is going to maintain the coloring by element but it's going to change the colors only of the carbons. So chain A will be green, chain B will be cyan, chain C will be magenta, and chain D will be yellow. Uh, or the star dot CA, the second one, is you're changing only the C alpha carbon. And the other carbons will remain their original color. Now, if you do the third option, which is the option we're going to take by chain, you're changing all atoms, including oxygens and sulfurs and nitrogens. You're changing all to the same color. So we're going to say by chain. And you should see four colors show up on your window now. Now, the green is one molecule. Cyan is the next chain. Magenta is the third chain, and yellow is the fourth chain. Everyone see that? So it, if you were just looking, that might not be where you would put the molecular boundaries just by looking at the structure itself. So this gives you a really quick indication about where uh, those structures are. And actually what we have is we have GERC2 in green, and it's bound to a G protein. Now, the G protein consists of three subunits. Uh, the G alpha, in this case, it's a G alpha Q in yellow. The Q is a particular isoform of G alpha. The G beta in cyan and the G gamma in magenta. Now, uh, in the off state of signaling, the G alpha sits on top of the G beta gamma. In the on state of signaling, those subunits separate. And G alpha comes over here in signals, and beta gamma comes over there in signals. But beta is not stable without gamma, so those never really separate. Uh, so here we have actually our complex, and that's the structure of what's going on. Um, 